Hello, how are you all? Hare Krishna. Today we are going to continue Vitala Pandurangan episode 35 and Purandra Dasa part 3 and this is the final part of Purandra Dasa. Where we left, Vitala decided to teach a lesson for his rude behavior and also to correct him. Last week we saw that Lord came as Appanna and took hot water on his face. Vitala didn't stop there. His Leela continued. Purandara Dasa once went to the house of a Dasi in Pandarpur. He said he wanted to be with her that night. His speech surprised the Dasi because she had heard his fame, his music and held him in high esteem. She said, it's not appropriate for you to come here. Don't stay here. Go back immediately as your name will be tarnished. After much persuasion, she told him to go back immediately. Disappointed, Purandara Das left with no choice. So he gave her his emerald bracelet as a gift and left. Next day, when the priest went to the temple, in the morning, he opened the temple gate and went inside. After a while, he noticed the bracelet, that is the bangle in Vitalan's hand was missing. He understood Vitalan was playing some Leela or some drama, but his duty was to inform the king. The king ordered to beat Thandora. You know what is Thandora? It is a proclamation by beat of Tom Tom. They went from street to street shouting loudly that if anyone saw Vitalan's bracelet, return immediately. The Dasi suddenly had a doubt to whose hand the bracelet in her hand belonged to. She immediately came out with the bracelet and handed over to the priest. Her doubt was true and the bracelet belonged to Vitalan. Now she was taken to the king. She told the whole truth to the king. Realizing the truth, the king immediately ordered to bring Purandara Dasa to the palace. We know Purandara Dasa's hometown, Vemannapuri, was near Pandarpur, so the gods brought him from there. When the king asked why he had given the Dasi the Lord's bracelet, Purandara Dasa did not understand anything. He cried that he ne neither came to Pandarpur nor given her any bracelet. But the king trusted the Dasi. Why a similar incident happened in the life of some devotees? We have seen the same happen to Janabai, Banu Dasar. Even in Tundaradi Pudiyalwar's life, such blame had happened. Why such blame that too? Theft is there in the lives of such devotees. We have already read about Panja Mahapadagangal, that is, five greatest sins. This yugam is known as Kali Yuka. It is a Hindu term that refers to the fourth and final age in the world cycle, which is also known as Dark Age. Kali Purush, that is Kali Bhagavan, entered the palace of Parikshit Maharaja. Seeing him, the king asked, Why you came here? Kali said, This is my age and I should be here. The king didn't agree. He said, We are all living a peaceful, happy life. There is no place for you. You should leave this place now. But Kali said, This is my yuga. So it is my duty to stay here. So you give me few places, I will stay only there. Okay, the king agreed and gave him the place of gambler, the alcoholic, the murderer, the liar, the one who talks ill about his guru, abusive towards other women, robber. Robbery is considered as the highest sin of all these things. So such blame fell upon these devotees. Even though Purandara Dasa told the truth, the king was not ready to listen to him. The king ordered to lash him with long whip that took 50 times. The punishment was about to give. I needed this punishment because I was being so cruel to everyone, thought Purandara Dasa. As soon as he thought this in his mind, he heard a voice that is Asariri. Sariri is the one who speaks with visibility. Asariri is a voice or word spoken from the skies 
the speaker being invisible the voice asked the king what wrong judgment did you give the priest said that when he entered the temple the temple was locked he did not consider that purandra dasa said that he never came to pandarpur the previous day and you did not ready to listen to him you know very well what a wonderful devotee and musician he was i did not prevent this from the beginning because purandra dasa was sometimes very harsh with everyone being accused as a thief is a very shameful thing i wanted him to get that punishment now he had learned his lesson it was me bitalan who gave the dasi my bracelet leave purandra dasa the king asked apology for not scrutinizing properly purandra dasa learned his lesson and he became humble thereafter god doesn't discriminate between those he likes or those who doesn't like there is no such thing that he doesn't like only people some people like him some they don't like him right who ever commits a mistake he will go his way and correct them purandara dasa is an aspect of narada however whenever great souls are born in this world the anger ego which are all the natural characteristics of human being come to them also but to maintain their purpose of the birth god often gives them severe punishment than other ordinary human beings so purandra dasa served his purpose of birth which was from 1484 to 1564 he formulated the basic lessons of teaching carnatic music by structuring graded exercises he composed geetas his work was appreciated by many scholars of his time a statue of purandra dasa has been erected at the foot hills of tirumala in alipiri on 14th january 1964 the india security press department of post had issued a stamp in honor of purandra dasa on this for on his 400th death anniversary there is a lot more to say about him those who are interested please google and learn more about him that is all for now shall we learn about a new devotee next week until then jai vitala hari vitala ramakrishna hari jai jai bolo vitala panduranga ki jai